Okay, welcome back. Last step. So now you can see I made my bear. He's in good shape. Tail. He is um, physically balanced, right? When I stand him up, he's not lopsided. And he is visually balanced. I'm going to look at him from all sides. Ears the same height. Pretty much the same width. Same thing with the legs. Pretty good, right? Now here's my beaver. I did a lot more work to the beaver. As you can see, I love the idea of adding movement into our artwork. So I really tilted his head as if he's looking off to the left side over there. I love that. I pulled out his legs a lot more um, so that his arms are wider. And now I can do some cleaning up. So if you look at the tail, it's not exactly visually balanced. That upper left is a little tall, so that's when I can come in with my pin tool and slowly scrape off a little bit. My suggestion is always do a little bit at a time. You can always take away more, but you can't put it back. Remember, we're doing the subtractive method. Then I think I should take a little bit off here on the side, and I'm good to go. Now cleaning it up. If I go underneath, I could still see I have a lot of um, marks from my fingers of where I was pinching and pulling. So I could take my finger with a little bit of water and get rid of those marks. Now, as we get in between the legs, it's a lot of hard to do. My fingers are not gonna fit in there. So that's when a Q-tip comes in handy. I dip that in water and that could help with those areas where it's tight to get into. And again, because this is a sculpture, I should really be looking at it from all directions, upside down, from the top, the left side, the right side, aerial view underneath. And when I go underneath, I could see a big boo-boo here. I got that uh, wrinkle. So again, I wanna take a little bit of water, not a lot, try to smooth that out. So all the edges, all the sides should look completely finished because a sculpture you can hold in your hands and view from all sides. So if one side's not finished or it got some wrinkles there or some lines that shouldn't be there, it's not going to look like a completed project. So I'm just gonna double check. Oh, got my fingernail in there and do that. After I do my editing and my smoothing, checking my physical and visual balance, now the last part is to add in eyes. So you can do it with a pin tool, you can do it with a toothpick, if you have a coffee stirrer at home, any of those things will do. Now the eyes you really wanna get correctly placed. Kids sometimes put them too far back or too close, it's not in the right, area it's going to look out of proportion or something's going to be off so that's why you know a visual reference is always important so i was kind of looking at this um beaver i really liked the way that the body looked i liked how the arms came out very very simplified version of what a beaver is and the eyes for a beaver are about there so i just take the toothpick and just jiggle it around a little bit and there's my one eye and then obviously I want it to be visually balanced, so I hold it up and I see that the next eye should be over here on the beaver, and that should be sufficient. Remember, this is something that was normally carved out of stone by Native Americans, so it's really like a simplified version of that animal. Now you see on some of these stones, people added in texture, and that's definitely okay if you want to do um, the traditional stone obviously is smooth in texture but if you want to add texture and it's fine but you got to remember whenever you add in texture you shouldn't be drawing with a pin tool or let's say a toothpick everything you do has to be an imprint has to be an impression so what do i mean by that well here's some scraps of clay right i'm just going to make it flat and if i wanted to do that tail design for the beaver um, I wouldn't take my pin tool and draw it. I'd actually press in those lines to the clay. That way it doesn't make any clay crumbs, what I call them. It's nice and neat. Or if I wanted to add in that furry texture on the body, again, I would use the pin tool and put the lines really, really close together. Not a lot of space in between. And then it gives that illusion of fur that the beaver would have on its back. I'm gonna choose to keep mine plain. Um, I kind of want to stick with the tradition of a real fetish kind of carved out of stone. Um, I like what I did here. The movement I think really adds to it, the balance, and he's actually going to sit up where my bear is um, just standing up. 
Here's his body rounded, back is nice and rounded, not too flat. And then I just have to add in the eyes on him. Now, obviously, if you're doing a bird, that's gonna be a little bit different than what we started with the bear. Maybe you're doing an owl, maybe you're doing uh, a raven like I have here. And so they're gonna be slightly different. However, pretty much the same as far as smoothing, visual balance, physical balance. You don't want anything too thin on there that it would break off. So just so you know too, I did start off with this guy as a bear and this guy as a bear. But as I started working with him, uh, I said, you know what, it kind of looks like a beaver to me. And sometimes that happens. You actually change your mind halfway through because the clay takes on a mind of its own and starts turning into something else visually for you. So I hope you can see how important visuals are to have resources to look at, having time, patience, and actually looking at it from all sides. I hope you enjoy making this project. I know I did with you. Have a great day. Bye.